psychiatry, it's a field that is, uh, it's an old field. Uh, there are huge medical problems that are associated with psychiatric disease. Uh, pressing need and very much in the, in the news, uh, psychiatry being called upon to answer questions that it's not quite ready for. We don't understand the brain nearly as much as we need to in order to specifically treat uh, these disorders. We have treatments that do work. Uh, uh, but they're not specific enough, uh, and that's because they're not based on a deep understanding of the brain. It's the use of light to control targeted cells and specific events in those cells uh, in an intact organism, in a living, behaving uh, organism. So use of light to reach in and, and turn on or off particular things happening in particular cells. Uh, it certainly was a high-risk experiment and the way you, you can really know it was a high-risk experiment, people had known about these, uh, these genes that these microbial organisms make and use for their own purposes. These are algae and bacteria that make light-activated regulators of electricity basically, but these are single-celled organisms. And people have known about them for decades and studied them, but nobody had put them into neurons. And it wasn't even a eureka moment either because lots of people had talked about it. Lots of people had talked about putting these genes into neurons to control them. Uh, but it was such a leap to actually do it, uh, to, to actually, because we know that it's, you know, if you, to put something from a microbe into a mammal, that's a big step, a lot can go wrong. And uh, that was really the, the key step, it was to just do it, despite uh, uh, how big a leap that actually was. You know, at one level, you could say, this is not new. Uh, psychiatrists and, uh, you know, general medicine doctors have been providing medications and treatments to people that change how they uh, think for a very long time. Even talk therapy changes how people think, and so how is that different from the ethical issues of optogenetics. The, the key difference, if there is one, is probably in how specific it is. With optogenetics, you're really getting uh, to the cells and the circuits that are controlling motivation and reward, uh, fear, anxiety, pleasure, memory. And as it gets so specific, you have reduced side effects. There's less that it seems self-limiting about it. And you look at that picture and you think, well, okay, now it's not so much it's, that it's a new ethical issue, but it's, it becomes a well-posed ethical issue. You really have to pause and think now, what does it mean that we can do these things 